Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, aka Gyres Rogue, Gyres in the Jungle, whatever you want to call me, you may. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Mother's Day. Um, hope well, as of recording this, you're probably tuning in on Monday or some other day in the future. But hey man, thank you for tuning in. This is episode 19 of the Rambling Rogue Show, and as always, I'm just here to ramble to you guys. You know, I've got about a week's worth of uh, stuff built up inside my mind that I've gathered here that I want to just, you know, ramble on about. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate the point of this show. Yeah, I, I will be doing interviews, and I'm striving to actually get more interviews to kind of get some exposure out into different places and in different fields and in different worlds and whatnot. You know, it's like a, you know, I'm like a really naturally curious guy. So, you know, interviews on that front are very personal, but this show really is just so that, you know, if you'd like to have some voice filler and if you'd like to just have something on where maybe, you know, you listen intently and you follow my rabbit hole, my stream of consciousness, as they say, you follow my, uh, my path, you follow my, you know, my thought process, or you can just have it in the background as just like, you know what I'm saying? Something nice, light that, that doesn't take too much attention, but that again is just voice filler. It's just there. It's just, you know, noise that you use just in the background. I know <clears throat> quite a lot in my own life, man. I, I use a lot of different things, quite a few, not a lot, but quite a few different things as voice filler. You know, when I just want to kind of just turn my brain off and really, I don't want to listen to music because, you know, music gives you that, you know, it just gives you energy, you know, and and, and it's not necessarily always like get up and dance type of energy. You can listen to down music, you know, like downbeat music or whatever, but it's when I say energy, I mean, like, it's always just, it just sways you in a certain way, you know? Like, it could either make you very, you know, feel very sad, it can make you feel very happy, it can make you feel very, you know, just, it can make you feel angry, it can make you feel nostalgic. When you just don't want to feel anything, when you kind of just want to sit down and just, you know, just have something going, you know? I I can't really quite explain um, the situations. Like, maybe, hmm, whenever that happens to me, Maybe it'll be like late night, right? Maybe I just want to go to sleep and I'm really stoned off some sativa, you know? And so my mind is like working like, you know, extra hard. And it's like, I like, I'm thinking a whole bunch of thoughts. My mind's whizzing. You know, you'll cut something on like the report of the week, you know, really any of his content. There's this other guy who's out there. He makes a podcast called the sleep with me podcast. That one's actually on iTunes. You guys can actually check that out. It's re- and SoundCloud, I think, too. Really, really great podcast, that one. That one, it's it's literally a guy who's doing basically what I'm doing. It's just with a little bit more of a loose structure. He's just talking to you as voice filler. And the whole time, literally, it's like, you know, he's just in this very quiet, you know, very, very nice, calm tone. And he's explaining everything with this very even even temperament that you know it's just so consistent and it's so i guess you could say hypnotizing that you would eventually just eventually just you know just fall asleep to it it's 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 actually quite effective um (laughs) so there's yeah no it's yeah that's what that's what we're doing this for that's what the rambling rogue show is trying to be a show like that that just kind of is there um, of course, you know, I strive to have more moments, so I've got the camera here, but mainly it's just so that my voice can have some place to land so that I have a, you know, way to just, you know, export thoughts in my mind, but also so that, you know, the service so that if you, if you feel like maybe, Hey, you want a little something that's a little bit more chill right now, some content that's uh, a little bit, Oh, 
no use explaining it any further. So, I'm not going to lie, listener. It's about 4-ish p.m. And uh, I, this is the, the part of the show where I start complaining like crazy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, man, I'm going through it. Nah, but seriously though, you know, uh, it's taken me a few hours to even start recording. It's about, it's been about three hours since I've been home. It's Mother's Day. Like I said, we came back from, uh, you know, Mother's Day activities, you know, church and the like and whatever. But, uh, yeah, it took me a couple hours to even start recording this. I've just been moping around and honestly, I've just been just in this state where I, I was like so anxious and just all caught up in my head about what I should do and shouldn't do. And, and I just want to say this, whenever that happens, if that happens to you, just recognize that that is your whole mind making it so your body can't do it, do anything. And you know, while you may think that thinking things through and trying to, you know, finish a full thought and trying to, you know, not rush yourself or or anything like that is okay. It's like, you got to have a sense of urgency. And that's what I'm trying to build in myself right now. It's this sense where, and, 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 and something that this sense of urgency has to be constant. It's this sense where I feel like I got a fire right inside of my belly every time I want to record. And I'm trying to build that up, but you know, it's just, it's been kind of one of those weeks where again, you know, it's not, I'm not in the most stable place and kind of because of that making content, you know, it becomes a little bit more of something that you do. I don't want to say out of desperation, but desperate feelings come up when you make content, you know, and I don't like that. It really should be a thing of passion more so, but what I'm finding a lot of times is, is that I get caught into these thoughts of, you know, what if I don't make it? And what if I, what if all my endeavors never work? And, you know, what if I just, you know, just all these what ifs and, and once you get caught into that, you basically just, again, you just shut off. So whenever you, whenever you hear those thoughts around you, hey, it's 420. Damn, I don't have any weed on me right this second. Well, I do. I mean, it's somewhere, but damn. But anyway, whenever you get those thoughts, try to just recognize that that is the time that you should start working like immediately, you know, because it's like that literally is just your body and your mind having a disagreement straight up. You know, there's a disconnect there because it's like, I've got all this energy. I mean, I'm, I'm awake. You know, what am I doing though? I'm just surfing through YouTube and I'm just procrastinating, trying to just, I guess, push the time along. I was literally just sitting here, basically just letting the clock run so that I'd finally have the excuse to say that, oh, I don't, you know, like maybe, maybe let's just do the show tomorrow or something like that. It's just like, no, forget it. Forget that. You know, and and to kind of tie that, this whole conversation again, this is that part of the show where I come and complain and talk about how hard it is to be a creator. I'm sorry, but I always have to have that little moment to kind of tie that in. It's like, The same thing with my music, man. You know, with music, what I'm finding is, is it's, it's a thing where a lot more people want to do it. But what I'm finding is it's a lot of people that get caught with these feelings I'm talking about here and they just sit with them. And, you know, of course me too, I sit with them as well. And there'll be times where days, you know, will go by where I just have none of that music drive. But again, I think it's, It's that fact that we have to start reminding ourselves that that is the time we should start creating. It's when that feeling starts to arise, when that doubt, that, you know, grain of just bad thoughts enters. You got to, you got to, you got to exit that out. You got to, it's urgent because to me, it's like every single time I want to do something, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start and I'll get passionate and then, you know, maybe it won't happen in a day. Maybe it won't happen in a week, but then you just lose that energy. You lose that energy somewhere because you don't quite get that, you know, 
pat on the back that maybe you're looking for. You don't quite get all that praise. And so now that initial energy that you had, it has to keep coming from within you. And I think that's what messes a lot of people up. Now, my question going out is how the hell do you cultivate that energy, that energy to say, I want to do it. I want to do it. Yes, it's passion. But again, it's like, you know how easy it is to just fall away from passion? I guess by the way that I'm speaking, you guys could tell I'm in a bit more of a serious uh, mood today. I'm, I'm pretty much serious quite a lot, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, my week hasn't been great. It's been up and down. I mean, I, I did get a call, you know, that, that we will be employed. So, hey, there's that. You know, I uh, got a call from a uh, warehouse job that I applied to and that's what we're going to be doing. So I, I was told that the job too, it's going to be having some heavy lifting, things like that. You know, it's going to be different. If you guys don't know, um, I used to be a cashier at big lots and, um, I'm just going to say it for the podcast here. I was fired from the job and you know, it was actually a very shameful experience. And I actually did make a video, an entire video explaining my side of the story and explaining my feelings and thoughts to it. And um, one day, one day I'll put that out when I feel comfortable. But for now, let me just let you guys know what my plan is. My plan right now is to take the money because technically speaking, I'm going to be getting a raise at this job. I mean, it's not much. It's about a couple bucks. Well, not, that's, that is much. It, it's a couple bucks more than I was working at the last, making at the last job. And I'll be having roughly the same hours too. It's just now what we're going to be focusing on is upgrading everything <laughs> to getting it to a level where my content is actually, you know what I'm saying? Decent to look at, decent to hear, all of that. Um, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. But you guys, if you're watching right now, you're basically in at the ground floor. Think of yourselves as like investors that have gotten in on some crazy new like you know like you know stock option that that is that's about to blow up you're literally here at the ground floor think about the kind of props you're going to be able to basically have against all your peers when you'll be able to tell you'll be able to tell them hey i was a fan of this dude gyres rogue since like you know he was recording off of audacity and like with a trash like computer or whatnot so it's like you know yeah take that take that to the bank <laughs> yeah it's the rambling rogue show y'all we rambling we are rambling yeah no um oh my mixtape cover so the cover of this episode i'm gonna do it going to be the cover for my mixtape if you are watching up to this point in the episode i don't think anybody is watching but that's okay because we do this every day it doesn't matter if you're watching up to this point i would really 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 appreciate if you could just let give me some feedback on what you think about that cover um my mixtape linda ep will be coming out soon and so i would love any and all feedback that i'd be getting um, on this cover, this cover is going to be the cover for my mixtape. It's going to be what represents my mixtape. If I'm really cool, I'll have it up like while I'm saying all of this, you know, and I'll, I've done that in editing and, um, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really asking y'all to support. I would just really love your feedback. You know, like if you don't like, you know, supporting SoundCloud artists, I, I kind of get that, you know, like I'm not trying to shop a link right now. I mean, I will, but really though this cover i mean it was an idea of mine and i wasn't really quite sure about it so i i just it would mean a lot if i got some feedback because i think it's a pretty bad cover and like honestly but i shopped it to a couple people around me and they were giving me some other thoughts so i would love some objective or, or not really objective because if you're listening to this you 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 must be biased in some way towards me but i'm looking for some i guess fresh perspectives on it i don't know um Linda EP coming soon. 
we're gonna have about five to six tracks on there eh, who knows what'll happen and um basically just wait for me y'all wait for me on that one that's my that's my date that's not second mixtape and after that we won't be done we're gonna uh, mark my words I'm saying it on the podcast right now we are gonna continue going and put out more music after that tape um i want to also perform too so i'm gonna try to get things like that set up i just wanted a good body of work that i could actually go back to that is actually able to be performed out that's what i wanted first but yeah oh god Whew. my cat my cat just jumped into my damn window you hey hold on let's get down to the cat so camera time where's that Shadow here just had her uh why is she making the noise with that? Shadow here just had her kittens. She had about five kittens. And um the reason why she had them was completely on accident. We just didn't get her spayed. And uh pretty much, you know. I'm not gonna lie she had five kittens she has three now and it she's i mean she is my cat she's not really my cat she's my brother's cat but uh yeah no she has three she has three kittens now one of them died in the bed where like we had them so like it was just like face down into the cotton and like there were small small kittens then they were probably like two maybe three weeks old and like they kind of, like, its face was just buried, and it was the runt of the litter, I guess you could say, because it was, like, you know, definitively small, and it was, like, yeah, whatever. And it was, like, a black cat, too. It was straight black. But, yeah, no, that, that, that cat died. And I had to bury it, man. That was actually, that was pretty rough. I think I did talk about that on the podcast once, but I'm bringing it up again. That shit was rough. That shit that shit that that yeah oh my god but anyway second cat the second cat that died or i don't even know what the hell happened to it really i don't know if cats get abducted i mean our house is like kind of out of the way from the street so like i don't know if it would really like be an abduction but all we know is is one day we had the 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 mother cat shadow inside and then you know we have her usually outside right now so with the kittens when she gets inside shadow when she gets comfortable she actually tries to bring the kittens in and what happened was she brought all the kittens in once and then my brother actually ends up taking them all back out but when he takes them all back out you know, and he's chilling inside for a little bit. He comes back out to check on all of them. And at this point, you know, Shadow has not been back inside the house. So they've all been outside. He goes back to check up on the kittens. And yeah, no, uh, one of them's gone. Completely gone. And where did it go? We have no idea. You know, we, to this day, Still have no idea. It's been about probably, sheesh, like a month now since that happened. Maybe closer to like three-ish weeks, but it, it's that that was scary. Because like that shit literally just disappeared. Like, what the hell? Like, like you want to say, like, you want to point blame somewhere, but it's like you really don't even know what the hell happened. And then we looked. I mean, you probably only looked. I'm not even going to. You could tell me if I'm heartless. Again, I don't think anybody's listening to this point. But tell me if I'm heartless. We looked for about like two minutes. I ain't even going to lie. Like we looked for like two minutes and like around like the general area of our house. And that was that was all the investigations that went into the death of that kitten. Um, Damn. Shadow's looking right at me right now. Okay. What? I'm sorry. And now she's coming towards me. But uh nah, man, I'm just saying, yeah, that was a really sad and tragic thing. And uh yeah. I don't know how I got into a tangent about my kittens, but there you go. 
That's the Rambling Rogue Show. You know, you know, y'all know what time it is when y'all step into the Rambling Rogue Show. You know what I'm saying? It, it, every single day, it is. It's ramble time, and y'all know it. So, sit back, relax, and let's get to this next topic. So, yeah, like I said, though, my week has been pretty bad. Pretty bad week. Um, and expose this. This is probably going to be the, uh, like, title of the entire podcast. So, if you feel clickbaited, there you go. You just got clickbaited. But, um, so this week... As you guys know, uh, I am a SoundCloud rapper. Not this week, I am in general. But um, I am a struggling SoundCloud rapper trying to make it in this crazy doggy dog world. Uh, you know? And uh, as it turns out, you know, I was, I was surfing YouTube or whatever the other day. I think it was uh, the day before yesterday. So today's Sunday. That was uh, about Friday. And uh, what I tried to do, you know, was uh, just have a good time on YouTube. But what I ended up doing was finding the uh, No Jumper stream. So, okay, I click into the stream, you know, and, and, and if you're not familiar with No Jumper and their streams, you know, No Jumper, Adam22, all of that, you know what I'm saying? LA outfit of people. That essentially just works in music. I've referenced them, I'm sure, many times inside the podcast and whatnot. Anyway, um, LA outfit that puts on new rappers. They have Sunday night, they, Sunday night. They have random night streams where they just go on for hours, just listening to people's content that you know they send to them for money to you know be blasted to their listeners as well. It's an opportunity for exposure and it's an opportunity to see how people like your music. Um, the price tag is a little hefty though. I mean, not if you're somebody that's actually, you know, that can actually afford it. I am not, but, uh, you know, shit, I pull up in the stream $60 for a SoundCloud video or SoundCloud play or a video play. It's usually 75. That's what they're boasting tonight. So I'm like, she, I start feeling confident. I pick a song out in my catalog and I shoot 60 bucks from my credit line to them man's is over there. Now, after some ridiculous fucking hijinks, absolutely ridiculous hijinks that goes on after I send the fucking money because I don't even actually get to have my song heard initially. I send the 60 bucks and then because I wrote a little fucking cheeky message on the shit, before my link like my soundcloud link so the only way to get them to actually you know see it is that in the donation you put your link there but i put a little cheeky message and the message is what he sees he doesn't click into the message or read past it you know to see the link so this nigga skips my whole ass donation and just fuck just keeps going right so i had to send another fucking donation to tell the nigga about the last donation and in that one i made sure to put the link first but it was like, my nigga, like that was just terrible. So that was just a bad start. I'm not, and I'm not blaming anybody for that. I'm just saying like, that was just a bad start to it. And it only got worse because after playing three or maybe four about trash ass fucking SoundCloud songs, this nigga kept saying that he was going to be doing his last song, right? So finally, like in between these songs, he kept saying, this is going to be my last song. This is going to be my last song. So he's like winding down. So finally, my song comes on and it's supposed to be the last song of the night. These niggas, because he's sitting there, it's Adam 22, and then it was, and it's his boy, his videographer, Chris Long, right? I have a high respect for like all these content creator dudes just because of the fact that they've, I mean, they're just living testaments to what I'm doing and on a bigger scale, right? But, um, God damn it, man. These fucking, like, guys. Like, like, this nigga literally puts my song on. He puts it on. And then homie is just sitting there yapping it up. Just talking. Just straight. Just having a full conversation all over the first verse of my track. And and I'm not going to lie. 
if my song was like fire, it would have caught his attention that he would have got like whatever. Like I can understand and see that. But goddamn, you could at least afford me the fucking luxury of just silence, my nigga. And I was thinking back to it, like, man, I be watching these streams a lot. And, you know, I should have known that this would have happened. And, honestly, I kind of did know it was going to happen. But, you know, you kind of just, I just felt myself in that moment. So, you know, it gets to about the second verse in the song, right? They, they've been just chattering the whole time. And in, in the league, I'll actually play it for you guys. This part in the song is about where they stopped talking. About here. Right. Okay. Um I paused on accident because I was I had to pause on accident. Basically these dudes get to the midsection of the song and they listen to it, give pretty much no opinion on it. And in the chat, because they couldn't, they were talking the whole time. So because the chat wasn't able to properly hear the song, all I got was a few people that said L. And it wasn't like the whole chat, like it was like L, 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 none of that. It was none of that. It was like a few people that said L. And then it was a few people that said nice beat. And that's it. But the rest of the people, all they said was we can't hear the shit. So that got me hot, man. That got me hot. And, uh, you know, I couldn't sleep after that. It was an, it was late night. It was probably like around 12 a.m. And I just could not sleep after that. Like, I was gritting my teeth. I was just angry, man. Like, I was like, damn, bro. I really shot these dudes 60 bucks and that's it. But I was like, man, you know, that's the game. Like, honestly, what it taught me was is that, damn, you're out of that money. But it's just money. I mean, first of all, I had it on my credit. So I'm going to be getting points for, like, all that I spent. And like, you know, for the way I've worked out my shit is like, okay, I can kind of spend like an amount and I know I'm going to be able to pay it back or whatever. But, and so now I've spent my amount for like, you know, the past next few weeks, but that's, that's, that's I, but I've learned now that I have to target this audience with some shit that's going to catch their ear and keep it there. Because the league, while a decent song, it's not no, it's not something that just comes right off and 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 it just you know it it starts off running. You know, I think it's a song that you would like if you like me. So I learned something from it. I guess it was a sixty dollar price tag, so I don't know if you would say that that's worth it. Hopefully it is, because hopefully that makes it so that I can make a hit way worth sixty dollars or way uh, way worth. Worth way more than $60, but that's just how I'm seeing it. It's all about perspective, people. It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective, how you see the situation in front of you. So $60 is out of the window. These dudes damn near dismissed my whole song. At the end of the song, they're like, uh, you know, I, I basically, my the last line of the song is, shout out Gleeshy for the beat, and this nigga literally after hearing that had his finger right on the X, cuts that shit off. Literally cuts that shit off. The only comment he made on it was uh, just some cheeky shit about how, you know, damn, this stream is lit. That it got me really listening to a uh, SoundCloud post with only 27 uh, listens on it. And, um, you know, hurt my feelings a little bit. But, you know, it's the game. Now, my only question and the thing that strikes more fear into me, get away from me. My only question and, and and the thing that strikes more fear into me is how much longer do I have to learn this lesson? You know, and does this lesson ever go away from me? I think it's been said that, you know, there are just some people that never make it. But again, due to perspective, I always see that as what if all those people were just people that didn't strive until their moment came around? Like, you say, oh yeah, I was so passionate about X, Y, Z, but it just didn't come around for me. So 
I say, well, maybe you should have, you know, thrown everything away and still chased XYZ when it felt like chasing XYZ or your passion or whatever you call it, when, when it felt like chasing that was too risky. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, that's my question. It's like, okay, will I keep getting this over and over? Will my time ever come? Or will I, the bitterness and the hatred and everything inside of me, all that, just the negative energy, will that build up, swallow me, and end up switching me over into something where I'm living life as, honestly, just a bitter old crazy man? Like, I don't want to turn into that. And I and I feel a lot of that energy around me. But I, I think I find a way to manage and, and zen out and, and block it away. I, I'll say one thing. Positive comments, wherever they come from, definitely douse it a little bit. But you know what's way better to an artist? If you ever wanted to compliment an artist, if, it, if you ever want to make them feel better, if you know an artist that's ever feeling down, give them feedback that they could use to actually do something, like to actually make something with. You feel me? Like you give an artist some sort of constructive criticism, you tell them it's bad, but... I mean, at least if they're like me, yeah, man, that's just the world, man. That is everything. I love it when a person could actually just listen to my shit and they get a glimmer of my passion in them so much so that they have an opinion, an opinion that actually, you know what I'm saying, actually is different from mine. And it's, and, and, and they, and they, and they have a different vision of, of like my success than me. And then we have that kind of, I love conversations like that. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like a person sees the way you are differently. You know, the, the image that you post out differently. I love that. And when they can actually come back and, and feed something to you. Um, yeah. Rambling Rogue Show. Uh, I was just rambling on about passion and all of that stuff. Sorry about that. I just got really just into my train of thought and then out of my train of thought. But that's the Rambling Rogue Show. We're about 30 minutes into this thing. And we're going to go ahead and go to the next topic, I guess. Because I don't really have much more to say about passions except for that, man. Just just support people that, that have that glimmer in them. And if you ever want to help them out, you know what I'm saying? Say something that's like that. Um... And to kind of tie that into the no jumper thing, uh, I guess I'll say in that whole experience, the one thing I wish Adam 22 or Chris Long, which it's not their position to do this. They're not even rappers, but, and, and I think to other SoundCloud rappers, if, I mean, you're probably not listening to this, but if you ever do listen to this, I think that this is important too. It's not his job to give anything constructive to me. It's not his job. It's not his obligation. It's not anything like that. Yet, when he says that he's for the culture, right? And and I'm not just talking about me. I'm just talking about the people in general. When he says that he's for the culture, and I'm talking about Adam 22 or really anybody that says that, when we believe them or when we accept them as for the culture, I think that, we're accepting that kind of behavior when we send our shit to these people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you don't really, like, what am I saying? If you don't really accept him as a person that's for the culture, then you should really try to go and disregard that, that his whole like shit. Like you should really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying is, is, it would have been nice to have gotten some constructive criticism rather than just getting shoot out. And the other thing is too, it's like, while you're not obligated, I think that when you're for the culture, that's what somebody would do. You feel me? But I don't know. Maybe that's just my, but then again, he's been listening to hundreds of songs before mine. Again, mine was the last song of the night. So you're really worn at that moment. You know how much SoundCloud music there? There's a lot of really bad music out there. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying mine's not included. I'm saying it could be. It's just, there's a lot of music out there. And a lot of people want to get on. So, yeah, man, I, I just kind of wish that maybe he 
you know what I'm saying? Like inspire something because you really do have that position. You have that power to do so. And I don't know. One of the things that kind of made me excited to donate in the first place that night was he was saying, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? We've gotten like 80 million SoundCloud dudes talking about Zans, this and that. But then here I come in with my song talking about how you should stop chasing memes and how you should actually chase money and how, you know, I just want to get a chick off of IG and how, you know what I'm saying? I listen to death grips like here's 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 different topics and it doesn't even get it doesn't even get criticism. It just gets it just gets literally you're you're basically your ass to kiss like it's just like, okay. And it's like, hey, he, he's, he doesn't owe me anything, but. That would have been nice if you for the culture. Uh, so yeah, if you feel clickbaited, there you go. There you go. Um, what have I been listening to this week? This week, I barely, I barely got onto the uh, "Lift Yourself" song by Kanye. I know everybody's canceling out Kanye right now, but um, I'm just not gonna stop listening to his music. I really fuck with his music, like really tough. And um Yeah, no. I mean, now would I wear a Yeezy? I probably wasn't ever gonna get one before. But uh if they were ever cheap, hell yeah. You know, like a real one. And uh you know, again, I think that Kanye is one of those kind of people where he's gonna really make everybody see who they are. And let me not say again, because I don't know if I've ever said this on the podcast, but Kanye is the kind of person that's going to make everybody see who they are. So I'm just waiting to see when Kanye is actually back saying good shit or with good music. I'm just waiting to see what the reaction is like then. Because honestly, like just a, it just feels like a train to jump on to not like Kanye right now. And maybe it hasn't quite taken off yet in full effect, but I'm seeing it now. Like I just saw, you know, a clip of a famous rapper, Trippy Red, you know, throwing the Yeezys and all of this, but it was the same Trippy Red who, and these are different artists, but it was the same Trippy Red who, you know, is trying to like get a song with Drake going and he's trying to be a timeless artist. And I'm like, you know, Trippy, you kind of see that like timeless artists like Kanye do things that are timeless and I don't know, a very reactionary thing like cutting up, you know, or throwing shoes away or just something like that. This doesn't seem like what a timeless artist would do. What I'm seeing from the timeless artists, when, whenever they speak about Kanye, it's a little different. It's a little bit more reserved. It's a little bit more like we're going to wait and see. And I don't know. But anyway, just that's just my thoughts on it. Um, But what I've been listening to, though, lift yourself. That beat, oh my goodness. Lift yourself up on your feet. Let's get it on. Ah, oh, just beautiful. And and then the, the dude, the, the damn ski mask version. Beautiful. Just so retarded. Now, and, and when I say that word, I don't mean that to be talking about any people with any, you know, mental problems. But retarded, as in that beat, is just not nonsensical. Smoke Perp is as nonsensical on that damn beat. And he's just, I don't even know what the hell he's doing there. And then, then you have fucking Kanye on the actual version. Fucking scoopity whoop. And, and, uh, I just, I found this one hour fucking version of it that I just have not been able to get out of my fucking head. Honestly, the shit is just so like, what is happening is what I keep saying. And, 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 and I don't get an answer. But I love watching. I'm watching Kanye right now. I'm really, we're just monitoring. We're just watching. We're just, just waiting. You know what I'm saying? You got to play the scoopity whoop, man. You got to play the scoopity whoop. You got, you got, got to. Hold up. Hold up. Scoopity whoop. Whoop the scoopity poop. Whoop the scoopity, scoopity whoop. Whoop the scoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop to the whoop scoop. This 
Nah, but okay. Seriously though, really great Kanye. <laughs> really fucking great Kanye, and I, I can't wait for the album. Uh, Kanye. <laughs> um, what else are we rambling about today? Thank you for tuning in. If you're still here, you're probably not. But I don't give a shit, man. You know, I'm doing this for me to vent and for the people that want filler. So if you are here, you're probably not even listening anyway, but thank you for being here because my voice has some service to you and I appreciate that. You feel me? You feel me? All right. You know, this is, I love the effect that this show has on me, man. Whenever I record, I always feel lighter. I always feel like I'm just getting everything off my chest, like I'm doing the right thing or I don't know. So again, thank you for tuning in. Um, My mixtape is closer to completion. Yeah, you know, it's uh, Linda EP. Like I said, five to six songs. All about loving my car, my 2001 Toyota Camry. All about just that you know i mean just and just versatility in my own rapping ability that's a bar you you, you could you, you could clip that you could clip that but uh <laughs> yeah man it's just versatility with my rap ability you know what i'm saying just me flexing my arms a little bit while also having some sort of fucking subject matter i couldn't come up with a subject for a tape but i knew i wanted to put out a body of work and not just singles right now. Like, I'm going to be definitely putting out singles after. But I knew I wanted to put out a body of work. It just felt natural. So, if you're listening to this, hopefully you'll be out to support me when it comes out. Um, I'm probably going to get it on Bandcamp, SoundCloud. I'm debating YouTube because of, like, the way that YouTube works and whatnot. But I'm probably going to throw it up on YouTube as well. And, uh... Just wait for me, yo. Linda EP song, uh, uh, uh mixtape all about a car. Not Hobo Johnson. All respect to uh, Hobo Johnson. I hope that's his name, cause, cause, hold on, let me, let me really look it up before I start butchering. Shout out to Hobo Johnson, though. I guess there's a dude out there, listener, who had the idea of actually making a mixtape completely about his car as well, and um, I caught his story. When he actually ended up doing a uh, interview with the Needle Drop, you know, very popular music reviewer on YouTube, but um, he did a small interview with him, and essentially he was explaining a mixtape all about his car. Now I didn't really get too into it because as soon as I heard that, I I totally just blocked out everything from it. But I've kept his name in my mind because I want people to know and fuck fuck what they think, but I just want people to know. That um, I really had no idea about this guy um, until that video came out and until I actually looked into him. I mean, his story itself was actually very intriguing and I might even actually dwell deeper into him after I'm done with my mixtape and after all of that. But yeah, I just I just didn't want to at all, you know, make my tape, you know, like his tape. You know, like it. I wanted my artistic direction only, at least in the, in regards to making a tape about a car. <laughs> like I'm very open in, I think, and you'll be able to hear it. I, my, my influences, my musical influences. Yeah. They're, they're clear, fucking clear. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to tell who the hell I listen to, who my top five people are in my playlist after listening to my mixtape. If you're a music person, but, um, yeah, no, shout out to Hobo Johnson. I just looked him up on YouTube. Looks like he's very successful right now. And, um, you know, if I could get to something like that where, it, yeah, look at this guy. He's talking about the official YouTube channel for Hobo. It's it's the official YouTube channel for Hobo Johnson and his 94 Corolla. I got an 01 Camry that I love. And, uh, well, there you go. There you go. So, What else? What else? What else? Anything else? Anything? Mm, nah, 
we talked about the don't jumper shit. We talked about Old Bo Johnson and my mixtape. We talked about Scoop with the Whoop. Talked about me being hired. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Shout out to the report of the week. Um, you get me through my week. Yeah, yeah, no, no, your videos are therapeutic. Your content is very therapeutic, and it's a very anxious time for me. And I've been using a lot of his stuff to to just calm my heart and to calm my temperament. And uh, and also just to, I mean, and this wasn't even expected, but he's just been a, I put this on my Instagram. He's been a beacon of hope for me. Like he's been a kind of a, like a reminder to be a good human being, a decent person that just, more than empathizes with people, more than just sees things and, 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 and feels them, but actually just acts and is just according to that. And is just, you know, aware of the impulses of life and aware of the outside influences that can take control. And is just a guy that shows you that you could just be you, you know? And, and I, I, my hat is all the way off for, for that. All the way off. I mean, he's just so consistent, so consistent in his in his just lifestyle embodiment. And maybe that funny that it's being you know funny that it's Mother's Day, but maybe that's you know an attribution to his uh, upbringing. I'm not sure exactly what his upbringing is. I'm not sure exactly how he came up, but I'm sure that it was the people around him, the people that brought him up, that made him so solid inside of his you know his lifestyle, his way of thinking, his 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 act which i wouldn't even call it that his just his way i would i would assume that it would be those people that i thank for that you know what i'm saying it'd be those people that brought him up because it's like here's a guy who's just it's just so stand up the report of the week the report of the week you know he's inching up to a million subscribers now on youtube and i caught up to him very late i'm on because i guess now he's caught up so much you know hype and whatnot and I'm no new, you know, champion of his, but you, he's enthralled me most definitely. And he's, he's got me, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there sometimes listening to some of his stuff. So simple. So just cut and dry, just content. That's just consistent and is there. And it's just, but still has this way of just being so directly, I guess you could say, right, like correct, like. Yeah, that's how a person should be. Like, yeah. But um I mean maybe save for his meekness and maybe save for his his traits where he's like, you know, a little bit more of an introvert, which that's more preference, but just his conduct and the conduct that you assume he has, right? Because it's really just food reviews and just, you know, his his rambling talk, which is more where you get that, you know, his his ethos and his, you know, like, you know, but it's his conduct, the way he carries himself. Is, and he's only, and I heard that, I was watching the Before He Was Famous video on him, Before They Were Famous video. He's only probably, what, a year or two older than me? It's, I, just, I just get so much inspiration when I see things like that. It's like young people that just defy all expectations. And they come in different shapes, sizes, and forms. They can come in the shape of a guy who wears suits, ties and formal attire every single day as well as the shape of a guy who wears his locks the way he wants to and doesn't want to conform to any of the cool trendy ways that people wear their dreadlocks today i don't know just rambling just rambling Why didn't my sound work? What? <laughs> yeah, man. I think that's going to be it for this episode of the Rambling Rogue Show. Episode 19. Give yourself a round of applause. Do it. It's you. It's all you. It's all you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Corny shit.